This is Dr. Hayek and this video is about covalent network solids. I will start this video by listing the different types of solids that we know. Now solids can be as hard as diamond or as soft as wax. Solids can conduct electricity or some of them can be insulators. Now the physical properties and the structure of solids depend on the intermolecular or interparticle interactions within the structure. Now based on this, we can list four different types of solids. The first one is metallic solids, where the atoms are held together by non-directional covalent bonds, or what we call them, C of electrons. Now example to this, copper, iron, and many other metals from the periodic table. The second type of solids is ionic solids, where the ions are held together by mutual attraction between a negatively charged ion and a positively charged ion, and this is what we call ionic bond. An example to this, sodium chloride and magnesium oxide and many other salts as well. The third type of solids is the covalent network solids, where the atoms or molecules are held together by an extended network of covalent bonds. Now, this is called directional covalent bond, and the best examples to this are networks that are formed from carbon and silicon. The last type of solids is molecular solids, where molecules are held together by intermolecular interactions, such as London dispersion force, dipole-dipole interactions, and hydrogen bond. An example to this, HBr, H2O, and so on. Now in this video, I'm going to focus on covalent network solids, and I'm going to talk mainly about network solids that are made from carbon, such as diamond and graphite, or silicon, such as silicon carbide and silicon dioxide. Let's start by discussing diamond where each carbon atom in diamond is bonded tetrahedrally to four other carbon atoms. Now, since the geometry around each carbon atom is tetrahedral, the hybridization around these atoms will be sp3. Now, each carbon atom will be connected by its turn to four different carbons, and this is going to form a very structured solid, which we call crystals. The different carbon atoms in diamond are connected together by directional covalent bonds. Now the strength of these directional covalent bonds make of diamond the hardest material known, and this is confirmed by the very high melting point, which is around 3550 degrees Celsius. If we zoom into the inside of the structure of diamond, we can see that every six carbon atoms are arranged in a chair conformation in a similar way to that of a cyclohexane. Now, from the side, we can see that the opening looks like a hexagon in a similar way we represent cyclohexane in a 2D structure. Now, this makes of diamond a very structured crystal and hence its hardness. Let's move on now and discuss graphite where every carbon atom is connected to three other carbon atoms. Now the geometry around each carbon atom is trigonal planar which suggests that the hybridization around each carbon atom is sp2. Each sp2 hybridized carbon will covalently bond to three other carbon atoms in the same layer to form interconnected hexagonal rings. Now, these layers will overlap on each other to form the solid. The layers are connected by weak intermolecular interactions. The bond length between two carbon atoms in graphite is equal to 1.42 angstrom, which is very similar to that exist in a benzene ring. The distance between two layers is equal to 3.35 angstrom. The two layers are connected together by weak intermolecular interactions called London dispersion force. The p orbital on the carbon atom will overlap with another p orbital from a carbon atom from a different layer to form a pi bond. Now the free electrons will be able to move from one layer to another 
And this is what will make of graphite a good electrical conductor. Speaking of electrical conductivity, let's compare the electrical conductivity of diamond versus that of graphite. If you look at the energy diagram of the molecular orbitals of diamond, we can see that there is a large gap between the HOMO and the LUMO. The HOMO stands for highest occupied molecular orbital, or what's also called the valence band. The LUMO stands for lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, or what's called the conduction band. It's going to be hard to transfer electrons from the HOMO to the LUMO because of the large gap in between the two bands. Now, this large gap will make of diamond an electrical insulator. However, if we take a look on the energy diagram of graphite, we can see that the energy of the LUMO is very close to that of the HOMO. And therefore, it's easy to transfer electrons between the two bands, which makes of graphite a good electrical conductor. By the way, graphite is used as a conducting electrode in batteries. Now that I showed you network solids made from carbon atoms, let's discuss in a fast way the network solids made from silicon atom. Now, the first example I'm going to discuss in here is silicon carbide, where the empirical formula for silicon carbide is SIC. If we take a look on the solid, we can see that the geometry around each silicon atom or carbon atom is tetrahedral, and therefore the hybridization around these atoms will be sp3 for both of them. Now the structure of this solid will be very similar to that of diamond, but it will not have the same properties. Let's consider another network solid made from silicon, which is silicon dioxide. Now, if we take a look at the molecule silicon dioxide, we might think that it should be similar to, the, to that of CO2. Now, this is only if silicon dioxide was at the gaseous state. However, at room temperature, silicon dioxide forms a network solid, where silicon has a tetrahedral geometric shape with shared oxygen atoms. I hope this video was helpful to you, so please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.